Thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, I'll introduce you to Tess. I think she's joined some of our meetings and uh, welcome. Uh, we have Priya and we have Martafel Foundation staff here and we all of us are here to listen about your experience and your journey with us. Uh, so Tess was working, uh, she was interning with us and uh, she did a small research with Youth and Democracy Fellows as part of the Youth and Democracy Fellowship. I also shared a link with all of you. So if you haven't read, you can go through it whenever you have time. And she's just going to tell about her experiences, what was what were her learnings. We were expecting her here, but because of the COVID situation, she was not able to join us. But I think she did a the she was able to complete her internship well on time. So now I will just over to you, Tess. Please uh, start with your presentation. Thank you so much, Nikita, for the introduction, and thank you everyone for joining me. This afternoon it's just about afternoon for me it's just coming up to 12. My name is Tess and I've been working with the Youth and Democracy program since May. Um, I was meant to be there from the start of May to the end of July but obviously Covid happened and instead I managed to do this remotely so I'm just going to share my presentation now and get started. Okay so I have titled this my research experience with Priya's Youth and Democracy Fellowship during Covid-19. So this is where I would have put up nice pictures of me at the Priya headquarters and um, within the city, but obviously that was not possible this time around. So this is just a screen grab of myself and some of the fellows um, during one of our online meetings. And this is the closest we got to um, the experience together. So uh, I thought it was just nice to have at least something of me and the fellows together. So the presentation will go a little bit like this. I will introduce myself um, and my background. I'll discuss why I chose Priya um, as my uh, fieldwork placement, how I developed the project, um, and a little bit of the methodology and ethics behind developing the projects that I got, um, obviously the limitations of the study, and then my learnings, both professional and personal, from the experience. So who am I? <laughs> I um, graduated from the University of St Andrews in Scotland in anthropology um, two years ago now. And if you can see the top uh, left hand picture, that's me graduating. It was not a very nice day. Um, during my undergraduate in anthropology, I worked extensively with qualitative methods and ethnographies, and we were encouraged to apply particip participatory research, um, both primary and secondary to my studies. Um, during my undergraduate, I studied medical anthropology, post-socialism issues, and post-colonial studies. And my undergraduate thesis was written on imagined communities, and I collected this data through interviews and participatory involvement. And so that's a little background um, to why my interest in social issues came about. Um, the photo on the bottom is me in Trinity College Dublin's famous square in front of the company lane. I'm a current master's student there and I study development practice. Um, during my postgraduate so far, I'm on my just starting my second year of two. Um, I have studied both qualitative and quantitative uh, methods and subjects such as global health, climate studies, economics, sustainable agriculture and African development. Um, during my master's, I conduct three practical placements. So my first was with an Irish based NGO um, and I compiled a report that examined environmental policy and the pra practical application of this in the field. Um, and so Priya is my second um, practical placement and then I will do a third later next year. So it all kind of builds on the skills that I'm learning. So why did I choose Priya as my practical um, placement? So as I mentioned, my background is in qualitative methods and participatory research. And so I was interested in taking this further and applying it in the field. I have done some quantitative research um, through my placement, but it just, I like the human aspect that um, participatory research allows for. And so I wanted to develop that further. Um, in terms of the role of Priya in the INGO space, I thought their focus on empowerment and kind of the underrepresented groups was very interesting. And it was something that I have seen in the past, um, I've worked with in the past, and so I was interested in seeing what Priya's approach was to this. Um, in terms of the subject area, um, when I was given the opportunity to work with Priya, they asked, you know, where would you like to work within the organization? Um, and the topic of youth and democracy really interests me, 
as obviously I have studied a lot of social issues in the past and so that focus on democracy as a, as a big theme I thought would be really interesting. And I also really like working with young people as a young person myself. Um, I think it's very interesting to see perspectives as they're often on the cusp of movements and um, big changes and so I thought it would be an interesting group to work with. Um, and obviously one of the draws was coming to India. I've never been to India before um, and although this didn't happen I do feel like I got to experience some of the country through the fellows and the um, organization and I know that if I'm ever to visit I would love to see you all there. So developing the research project. Um, in May my original proposal was rewritten. Um, obviously when I first wrote it, it focused a lot on case studies and a lot of discussion with the fellows because I assumed I would be there. Um, so rewriting it, rewriting it um, to suit the current situation was an interesting one considering everything was in flux, um, but Nikita was a great help in advising what might be of best use to both Priya and myself um, and also giving me the opportunity to collect data. A lot of my classmates in a similar situation worked with secondary sources or just did literature reviews. And so the chance to actually collect primary data was um, kind of a rare one. And I really appreciate that opportunity. Um, obviously my Trinity supervisor helped with more of the technical side of things. So that was getting ethical approval and changing all my forms because obviously I didn't need health and safety risks. So all the kind of bureaucracy things um, that went into developing this project. Um, and also in preparation, I read academic literature on both democracy and youth, um, noticeably Sen's work on peace and democratic society. I was interested in bringing in an Indian scholar uh, in order to contextualize the work, as well as having kind of more of a wider approach in the development sphere. Um, and I also looked at the role of youth in the development space, like I said, um, and that led me to literature on civic engagement and active participation. Um, so civic engagement, I came across when I was looking for the ways in which youth participate in the development sphere. Um, and I thought that would be a really interesting lens in which to look at the Youth and Democracy Fellowship because it focuses on volunteering and um, making small differences in communities for the better, uh, for the good of the wider society. So I thought that was an interesting concept. Um, an active participation I used in the lens of democracy. Uh, I didn't want to define democracy necessarily because I thought that would be the fellows jobs and they would tell me what they thought of democracy, which I was really, um, I was very strong on keeping that as a theme within my research. Um, but I focused on kind of the participation and the um, application of democracy in everyday life, um, not just as kind of a bureaucratic term that meant voting or kind of government officials, I was looking at the kind of everyday application. Um, and then from that, uh, in my kind of initial readings, and I spoke with some staff for kind of key informant interviews, um, and I ended up having a whole list of themes and topics that I could potentially cover. And so after speaking with Nikita, I helped to narrow my focus to themes of self and identity, both as key research themes, but also as the modules that I would then use as a lens to look at practical application of both self and identity and democracy in their social action projects. And so that just kind of narrowed my focus because to begin with, there was a lot of stuff and I was a little lost in um, how much information I had. So that was really helpful in that terms. Um, and also just as a side note, the word youth and the definition of youth changes depending on where you look and what you read and you know there is no one definition of youth so I used the ages of 19 to 28 which were the ages of the fellows within that program um, just as kind of a, a catch-all um, so that everyone knew what I was talking about when I said the word youth or young people. Okay so the methodology, ethics and context behind my research. Um, I've already mentioned that the qualitative approach was taken. Um, there was an interest in the story behind the fellows um, journey and their decision makings and so semi-structured interviews were probably the best way to go. Um, obviously if I was in person it would have been a little different but this was the second best thing in order to get the most out of the time that I had speaking with fellows. I chose an evaluative methodology. Um, I was exploring an existing program so that meant I was evaluating rather than um, coming up with an entirely new framework. Um, and a couple of ethical concerns that I had 
during um, the research and before the research. There was a concern about kind of an unconscious pressure on the fellows to speak highly of Priya as they were still members of the program, um, which there was nothing really I could do to mitigate because I was speaking with people who were actively involved. However, I got the impression that the fellows were open and honest with me, um, and the only way really to mitigate this was via further study. Um, and also in terms of my own role as the researcher, obviously not from the program or from the country, so there was a worry that the fellows didn't want to share with me because they didn't feel like I was someone who they felt a connection with. Um, however, I really got the feeling that the fellows went above and beyond to mitigate this for me. They were more than helpful, everyone was very open, um, and I immediately felt connected to the fellows even though I wasn't there. So I really appreciated that. Um, from a researcher's point of view, that was fantastic. From Okay, so my interview process. I joined a Zoom call in June, and that was my first contact, point of contact with the fellows. So I just introduced myself, my projects, and said who I was and what I was doing, and that gave the fellows some time to think through whether or not they would like to be involved um, and the implications that they might have. Um, and then the Youth and Democracy program put me in contact with the fellows, my email to introduce myself and my project. Um, each fellow was asked to read an information sheet and sign a consent form so they knew what they were signing up for. Um, and through that, I did 10 interviews with fellows out of 12 people interviewed. So I thought that was a pretty good ratio that 10 people wanted to speak with me. And each interview lasted between 30 minutes to over an hour. And these were done over the span of about two months, I would say, two and a half months, perhaps. Um, I had my final ones kind of the very start of August, so that was kind of my time frame. Um, and I held these over Zoom, Skype and WhatsApp, depending on the preferred um, platform of each fellow. I also did three interviews with staff, which, as I mentioned briefly before, I used as key informant interviews. Um, I wanted to ensure I understood the aims of the organization from both sides um, and they were also used as more of a confirmation so that I knew if I was understanding something correctly for about the fellowship that I could confirm that that is exactly what the fellowship was doing rather than misinterpreting something so I used that kind of in, in a multitude of ways. Um, as I mentioned I did semi-structured interviews so I came up with a list of 15 questions which did change throughout my process when I began to focus more on self and identity so um, in the end I did end up with 15 questions and obviously I picked and chose depending on how the interview was going um, a lot of the fellows interviewed questions or answered questions throughout the interview without even being asked them so it was a very semi-structured uh, manner and they were all given an opportunity to discuss anything that they would like to discuss that they thought would be helpful um, I asked permission before recording each interview um, and then I used an online transcription service called Otter um, which just created a manuscript for me um, which was a huge time saver because I started off doing it by hand and it just took hours so I did that and then I manually called, coded each one so I would go through and I would look for keywords and themes that I was seeing not only among the fellows but also from the literature, the PREA internal documents that I had already read, um, and then discussions I'd had with staff members. So that is kind of how I grouped my data. So I'm just going to talk through a little bit about which results, the results that I got, um, and discussion about what I think they might have mean. Um, there we go. So my first kind of grouping was themes of self and identity. Um, throughout the interviews I did ask questions that distinguished between self and identity, both the modules and the ideas themselves, um, but the fellows when speaking about them often just lumped them together as one, um, which I thought was interesting, so that is what my research has reflected. Um, so I've put up three quotes from three different participants that kind of reflect how they felt about the ideas of self and identity and the modules. So the first one, the identity module was my favourite because it really made me introspective. This common theme um, of the identity and self modules being their favourites came up through every fellow that I interviewed. Um, and when I asked an open-ended question about which module they found the most informative or interesting or impactful, everyone said the self and identity modules, which was why I thought it was the most important as well when we were looking at themes to focus on. The middle quote there says, my thought process of how I feel, how I see things and how I perceive things all constitutes the self. So this was when I prompted to ask about um, a definition of self and a de definition of identity. 
Um, I also asked how the fellows viewed ideas of self and identity before, um, and most had never considered this. Um, the few that had learned about it at university, and it was very much on a theoretical basis, not a practical application basis. So I thought that was very interesting that it was evident that it was Priya's Youth and Democracy Fellowship that was sparking these ideas and thoughts and introspective um, about self and identity rather than a previous discussion they had had. And then the final one there just says identities are how I perceive others or how I'm going to depict myself before you. So that again was how people maybe described identities rather than self. Um, there was a little bit of muddled between self and identities and I'm sure there always is. Um, but what I thought was interesting when I was doing this research was that both the sessions on masks um, and the sessions on stereotyping were referenced several times by the fellows. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with the Youth and Democracy program, um, the one on masks asked people to write words that reflect their outer self and their inner self. Um, and that was what sparked the kind of introspective comments um, and really made people think about how they present themselves to the society as well as how they present themselves um, individually. Uh, so that was very interesting for people. And also a session on stereotyping and stigma, um, which involved grouping different words uh, under kind of male and female typical headings, um, words such as strong and soft and gentle. Um, and that became very important later on for the social action projects. And I thought that was interesting that more than one fellow brought this up as something that really made an impact on them and made them think and start discussions with other people about these kind of stereotypical words that we use for gender. So on that note, um, I've put up three quotes from three different social action projects. Um, so throughout the process, I asked about the social action projects in depth to both create stories of change, so profiles on the fellows' journeys that were published from Priya. Um, but I also wanted to provide case studies on how the self and identity modules influenced the social action projects. I was looking for a connection, even if I wasn't outwardly asking for it, um, it became evident through the um, fellows' stories. Um, so for people who don't know, this was just kind of a practical module that they undertook where they were able to choose any subject that they thought would be important to society or make some difference in a small community or just a couple people um, and my results were very interesting so the first one the first fellow describes living a very sheltered life with no exposure to feminism or politics before she joined the fellowship or they joined the fellowship sorry um, and they ended up going on and doing a project about gender um, gender equality where they tried to educate people on um, the laws and rules surrounding gender equality um, and this sparked directly from the conversation about gender stereotyping that I discussed in the previous slide the um, identity the self and identity sessions um, and then slightly more clear the second person says the idea of my research project which is i'm working on is sexual abuse which also came through this self module so this is a direct correlation between self and identity modules and the practical application in the social action projects this person ended up working on male sexual abuse and um, how the stereotyping around male expression of emotion could hinder people coming out and getting help for things that have happened. So that was a really positive correlation that she made that, or they made that um, be, like breaking down these stereotypes and learning more about self and identity can help um, people become more open and then the society become more inclusive. So that was a great example I thought there. Um, and then the third one, I have done my livelihood project and that gave me an identity that is doing good work. Um, I just thought this was interesting because not only do ideas of self and identity inform the social action projects, but the social action projects also informed ideas of identity. So that kind of two way um, expression I thought was very interesting for the fellows to have picked up on. Um, so my third kind of theme of my uh, project was obviously democracy. Um, and like I said, I used ideas of democratic practice and active participation to mean democracy in this context. Um, and I asked the fellows how they practiced democracy before and after the fellowship. Um, so most people thought of democracy before the fellowship as a bureaucratic process such as voting. Um, and I have some great uh, 
work about people saying that they never voted or they only voted once or they never thought about democracy or they thought that democracy was kind of this foreign concept or faraway concept that they weren't involved in. Um, but the fellowship, the fellows described the fellowship to me as focusing on democracy um, through diversity and openness to other people's opinions, which in turn made the, the fellows more willing to be more open and actively participate because they saw it as more of an inclusive thing. Um, so I have kind of three quotes that emphasize this. So the first one, I've got to know from people that their idea of democracy is not the same as my idea of democracy, which was quite relevant. Um, this bringing together of different opinions really made an impact on a lot of the fellows and they said that was one of the best things about the fellowship to them. And the second one kind of emphasizes that there's a huge diversity of people in Priya. You have people from across the country, although more people are from the northern part and there are people with different sexual orientations. Um, this was great for people who uh, just self-describe themselves as maybe having some biases before to come into contact with people who uh, have different opinions and in one case someone said that this made them more liberal and more open-minded um, and more willing to discuss with people their own opinions which I thought was very interesting again. Um, and then the third one, what democracy means to me right now in this moment I believe is that I'm able to talk somewhat freely without any stereotype without any fear of what might happen. So this just re-emphasizes the uh, importance of openness within this fellowship um, and how it really boosted people's confidence on being able to speak about issues and spreading their own opinions throughout the community, even if it's just for a couple people, so that the idea can become more wide reaching. Um, so those were kind of the three main themes that I covered in my paper. And just to sum all that up, uh, what I think this all means, um, the research shows that by encouraging an engagement with and reflection on ideas of self and identity within the fellows made them more compassionate and open to other people's opinions and belief, and in turn more geared to fight for equality and democracy as demonstrated through their social action projects. So hopefully you can see the thread between the self and identity modules, the practical application and the social action projects, and then how that might lead to more active participation in democracy. So obviously this project wasn't perfect. Um, so just a little discussion on the limitations and also the impact of COVID-19 that it had on my research. So obviously working remotely was, is always gonna be a challenge. There was a need to kind of wait for um, other people and wait for you know, information and timings and um, just waiting for just a lot of waiting around essentially, especially to begin with waiting for my papers to be um, signed off from Trinity and then send them to Priya and it was just, it was a process. I'm sure it always is. Um, and also motivating self at home. I spent four months in lockdown at my parents' house and um, it definitely is difficult to motivate yourself when you are so far removed from the research and the community that you are working with. Um, so that was definitely a learning curve. Um, and also my study was very small scale. Um, I was unable to focus on ideas of gender, race, caste, socioeconomic background, um, both due to the time constraints of the um, research, but also the word constraints. My report was only 5,000 words. Um, so I had to kind of narrow my focus as much as possible, but I definitely could have talked forever about all of these different areas. Um, and I think the fellows were really interesting to speak, uh, interested to speak more about things, but unfortunately that will have to be another project. <laughs> um, there was also a limit on the fellows movements themselves and that impacted the social action projects. So obviously the COVID-19 pandemic meant many of the social action projects were changed. Um, they were meant to be in the field, but many fellows went home and they were not able to do their field work. So that impacted a lot of their projects. So I ended up asking about their um, original plans and why they came to choose their original plans, what they hoped the um, outcome would have been, and then discussing what actually happened and their interactions with the community they ended up working with. Um, most of that was online based. And so I, um, we spoke a lot about kind of the interaction between um, people on social media, which was interesting as well, um, but definitely a change to what I thought was going to be discussed. Um, obviously the time difference. Um, I would often wake up and I'd have emails from kind of five hours ago and I would reply and then it would be the end of the Indian working day and I would have to wait and that was interesting. Um, to kind of navigate and also with interview scheduling. Um, I ended up speaking to a lot of fellows at the very end of their day because when they were free 
didn't I was asleep and vice versa so that was um, something that we had it was a bit of a learning curve but we got there um, and just a lack of connection with the whole organization I obviously worked very closely with the youth and democracy section of Priya um, but I have never interacted really with the the rest of the organization um, and so it was sad that I missed out on that part it would have been interesting to see where the youth and democracy program fit in within the whole organization structure um, so in that term, it was hard to be creative and kind of feed off the energy of the project from afar. Um, but I tried to mitigate that as much as possible and the fellows were very enthusiastic and so that kind of made up for it, which I really appreciated. So my professional learnings from this project, obviously communication was a big one. Um, as I mentioned, all of my emails and messages had to be very concise and clear. Um, I had to ensure that everyone knew where I was and what I was doing because they couldn't just pop by and ask me, it had to be kind of a two way street. So I continued to touch base and made sure the fellows knew what was going on and where I was and spoke to Nikita and made sure she knew where I was. Um, and then on a similar basis, motivation, obviously this was a work from home challenge, um, but I definitely learned to stay on task and stay motivated throughout this period, um, despite the kind of setbacks and challenges. So that was, I think, a really important skill that developed over the course of my lockdown and the project. Um, time management, very similar to the other ones, um, just important to stay on task, uh, set myself deadlines, work to a target, um, and it definitely helped that I had kind of scheduled meetings and scheduled interviews, and so I was able to kind of work around it through that. And also creativity, I definitely became more flexible during this project, um, and I welcomed the new challenges that arose through working remotely um, and although I would have preferred to be with you all um, there I did enjoy the kind of challenge of making it work from afar and I think that was important especially the way the world is still now I think it was definitely an important skill to learn um, at this time and also personal learnings and reflections um, uh, both through the academic research but also just through the fellows personal anecdotes I learned a huge amount about India as a country and a culture um, and I definitely feel a lot more connected and um, it was so great meeting so many of the fellows remotely and we had great conversations not only about the project about India and about my research but also just in general about other things that people talk about when you're 20 something so that was really interesting and I would like to keep in touch with as many people as possible and um, like I said it would be great if I could come over at some point and see everyone um, but we shall see COVID, uh, COVID permitting um, and finally an enjoyment of research this was the largest study that I have undertaken um, of this kind um, and I really did enjoy my research topic and I also really enjoyed gathering the data. I feel like I collected a lot of really interesting data. Um, I really enjoyed the process of interviewing and speaking with all the fellows um, and that made a huge difference to my enjoyment of the project as a whole and my motivation to keep going was that I actually looked forward to speaking with each fellow, um, which is always good going into the field. You're never sure if um, this kind of level of research is going to suit you but I really did enjoy it and um, I thank you all for giving me the opportunity for that. So going forward um, both on a, a kind of person a professional academic recommendation um, I would suggest that further interviews at a later date um, with the fellows would allow for reflections um, and then it would be easier to see how the fellows then apply these um, skills and lessons that they have learned within the fellowship to a real world situation or an academic situation. Some people are going on to work and some people are going on to further education. So it would be very interesting to see if these views get altered in any way by the institutions that they end up in or if they instead carry these ideas forward. I think that would be a great study. Um, and also a similar study done with this year's fellows. Obviously this was the first year and so we didn't have kind of a benchmark. Um, and obviously impact measurement is not something that qualitative people are, are interested in usually. Um, and the word impact is a little bit um, taboo in the study, but I do think it would be interesting to see if this year's fellows um, explore the same themes or latch onto the same ideas, or if it was this group of fellows in specifically who 
connected most with the self and identity modules. And that could have been kind of a group effect, or it could have been one person leading the charge, or it could be the modules themselves. I think it would be interesting to see through this next set of fellows. Um, and I know it's changing a little bit, but I think it would be interesting to see if it has the same impact. So those were my two kind of ideas going forward. Um, and that is me. Thank you so much, everyone, for this opportunity. Um, I would like to open up the floor to anyone who may have a question about my research um, or the methods or my experience or anything like that, if we have some time. <laughs>